For the love of Mary. <laughs> I'm just letting that song settle on me. It's been a uh, it's been a serious week for a lot of folks in our community. So, hearing about that, that depth of love and and what that means, I'm just touched. Um, but then we have to shift and go on. So, for the love of Mary. The idea of first sight that you wrote about a minute ago, it really touched me because I was thinking that, you know, I had seen statues of Mary all my life. My grandmother was Catholic. She had Virgin Mary all over the house, lit candles all the time with Mary's the Guadal Lady of Guadalupe on the front of the candle. It was not any big deal to see it. And then I had that first sight situation, as I explained to you, out of Casa de Maria, where I saw Mary for the very first time. And since then, I've had this relationship with her that has deepened my appreciation for our teaching, but also for my faith. It's a wonderful demonstration of what Dr. Holmes wanted out of religious science. He wanted religious science to be exactly that, the science of the yoking, the science of the bonding together of ourselves and our spirit. That's what regulary means. It's yoking, bonding together. Religion is to bond us to this spiritual truth of who we really are. So when I look at Mary now, I see a depth of understanding of my own faith and am able to, to feel closer to the divine, to feel one with spirit. And that's really what I am anyway. That's what you are. You are one with spirit and as I started to share this journey with friends it's so interesting I love the way God shows up in so many ways the very friend who turned me on to this place I'm going to tell you about is in the audience today it's a place called uh, Mission San Conrado and it's up in the Sol uh, Sol Solano Canyon uh, which is near Dodger Stadium okay and there's this place let's look at it here there's this place up there where they have all these statues to the Virgin Mary see this father Tomas and this uh, and this actually it was uh, it was Conrado the, the 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 priest who loved Mary and worked so hard with the poor that he became sainted and then in California they made this mission this guy named Father Tomas d d uh, dedicated a mission to Mary and they have all these statues of her up on the on the hillside and you can go by and do your prayers and light the candles and it's it's outside so anybody can go and what's interesting is it's outside and and you know it's it's a sacred space and people allow it to be that sacred space nobody does anything to it nobody disturbs it it's just like there you know open for everyone that's what spirit does that's what the depth of, uh, of deep spiritual truth does it allows us to leave it alone and just be with it and so you can go there and these two phrases I really want to remind you this one up here blessed are you blessed are you each and every one of us because we are the descendants of the divine we are God's creation manifest right and when Mary was visited by the angel and they said rejoice highly favored one the Lord is with you blessed are you Mary had a really n neat and lovely response to it she said let it be to me according to your word when the angel said hey here's what's happening you're going to birth this child that's going to shift the planet and she said okay it wasn't like uh, really well I don't know if I'm up to that no she just said let it be as your word. And when we say, and so it is, that's what we're saying. We're saying, let it be as our word has spoken it to us. We're standing in the same kind of truth that Mary stood in. That's a very powerful thing to do because we understand that when we speak our word, prayer works miracles. Seems like miracles, but it's really, as uh, Michelle Madrano calls it, normicles. They're just things that happen. <laughs> right? They're the things that happen all the time, but because we put our attention on it, we didn't expect it to happen that time, we call it a miracle. But it's not. This stuff's happening all the time, all the time. It's always interesting to me how Mary has shown up in the world to become this rock star superstar and, and has always come and made these apparitions, these appearances at various <laughs> places, at Fatima, at Lourdes, at, uh, oh, I don't want to mess this up, uh, Medjugorje, Medjugorje, in Herzegovina, uh, whenever she has shown up, interestingly, it's been, or most of the time, it's been to children. It's been the children because they still have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and have not been covered over by all of the messages that tell us, oh, this doesn't happen. That can't be for real, you know? It's like that, uh, you've heard the Deepak Chopra story he tells about the little boy, a little girl who wanted to babysit their infant sister and the parents were concerned about whether this young child, like three-year-old child, could actually babysit the, the baby, the infant baby. And they went to the, the um, uh, what's the doctor for kids? 
pediatrician. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> First word sounds like two syllables. Uh, <laughs> And, and they talked about it, and the pediatrician said, hey, it's no problem. You got the baby monitor. Just let the kid go in there and do its thing. You know, it's okay. So their parents are in with the baby monitor, and they're listening, and the little child walks up to the baby and says, can you tell me what God is like? Because I forgot. <laughs> and that's sweet. I love that story. I don't know whether it's true or not. I don't care. <laughs> it's just such a sweet idea. It's a sweet idea that as we go through life, we forget how connected we are. So for me, this is why Mary is so important for me, because I go through life, I get disconnected. I mean, on the way in here, you know, I'm, uh, Johanna has brought her car down as we begin our trip, our transition into see me. She brought her car down from Oakland, and we're riding in her car, which is like a lot, a lot cooler than my old Ford. It's neat, man. You can plug the stereo in, and it'll actually play through the speakers. <laughs> Mine, you got to plug it in the ear, you know, and then you put your foot out to stop. It's like, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, you know, I, I, went, I went to all that space like, I need a new car. My car stinks, you know. But no, no, no. One look at Mary, I know I live in the divine. I am blessed. I am blessed, you know. I'm blessed to have a car, three cars. Now that Johanna's got a car and I got my camper van and I got a motorcycle and a bicycle, I even have a tandem. And until Johanna came into my life, I lived alone. That's a crazy thing to have a tandem when you live alone, right? I only got one of these, right? But I had two seats. <laughs> Blessed, blessed. We live in an abundant universe, my friends, you know. Enjoy this. Enjoy this. Let it be to you according to your word. When you look out the window and you see oranges on the tree, go pick one and taste it. Every little morsel. Look at where we live, you know. I mean, golly, it's 80 degrees outside. Yeah, I called my brother yesterday from the beach in Laguna Beach. Hey, how you doing? What's up in St. Paul? <laughs> really? Oh, it's a warm spell. It's 41. Wow. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> I loved it. I love him. <laughs> and, you know, and love is an interesting thing. Love shows up in thousands of ways with thousands of different names. We have all these different names. I mean, we have this four letters, you know, but it means so much because I love a nice cold glass of lemonade after cutting the grass, you know? I love my mom. <coughs> That's two different kinds of love, but it's the same word. Love has a big, wide scope, you know? But when it really comes down to it, uh, Ernest and Fenwick, in that beautiful piece they wrote, uh, the Voice Celestial, on sale in your bookstore now. That was easy. <laughs> I knew this thing would come in handy today. I don't know, it sits on my desk. For some reason, I wanted to bring it in here, and it worked already. But in The Voice Celestial, here's what, the, here's what they say about love. They said, love, aren't they, they cute? Look at those brothers. <laughs> they do, they got the, oh, that's, that's some serious thing going on there. Love is the union of two kindred things. Love is a union of two kindred things. That's really powerful when you think about that. What is a kin? What, you know, your kin, that's your relative, right? It's the union of something that you are relating to, that you are one with, and we are related to each other all the time. So as we think about this power for love, I wanna move it beyond, you know, the, just the, the familial love, the relational love, and into love of humankind. It's time for us to step up as a community into love for humankind, to express the goddess-type love that's within us from, the, from, an, from a, an avatar like Mary, from a mystic like Mary who, who uh, so represents the, the downtrodden and, and the poor and those that need and those that are in want. And we who have so much in our lives and how wonderful it is we have so much, it's time to step up and step out into the world and be more, to be into the, the mystic splendor and to use the thousand ways that we can express love and give it a name and find out who it's and what it's all about. I was down at Founders this week and uh, one of the guys that I, that I would sit and talk with, is, he's an OG, and I thought, was, I thought he was OG because, you know, that's like original gangster. <laughs> but it turns out his name is Gilbert and he's old. So he's OG, right? <laughs> Right? So 
I walk up to her and I see him, and I, I'm only down, I'm not down there that often, but I was there to meet with one of my uh, teachers from USC. We were doing a, a case study. They want to do a case study on Simi Valley. They want to find out what we do and how we do it. And it's really interesting that what, I, what I've noticed, oh, I think I'm on a tangent. I should get back to the talk. <laughs> I think this might be related, though, because it's about stepping out into the world. And it's about expressing through more love. <laughs> you know, we as a community have been giving money to various nonprofits every month, and once a year we give the big award. And so I've taken all of the years we've been giving money and all the awards we've been given, and I'm looking at the trend within them to see where it is that we tend to give our focus so that we can, as a community, rally, rally around that. You see, this is coming out of the Descanso Gardens. How many went to Descanso, right? See how many people in here? We all went there to talk about where we might go as a community. And one of the things that came out was we need more meditation. Thus, we're having more meditation. And another thing that came out is we need to do something social to have an impact in the community. So as I'm looking through all this stuff and I'm meeting with Mark Whitlock to talk about it, I'm seeing that we like to feed people, which makes sense because we eat a lot here. <laughs> we like to feed people. We like elderly people, and we like kids that are not doing as well as we'd like to see them do. So somewhere in there is the <laughs> sweet spot of how we're going to, as a community, move forward into expressing love and giving a new name to it and a new way to it that is Simi Valley's way. I think, the, yeah, so there, the tangent did fit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you good with that? So w just be on, be on the watch. We're going we're gonna to break out and do something really major so that, you know, we're already a, bi we're already a big fish in the, Simi Val in, the, um, in the CSL community. I mean, you know, we got Lane on the membership council, and we got the youth director here in our church, you know, and Dr. Susan did the youth program for so many years, and Jim ran for president of the CSL, and, and almost won. I wish he had, because he was just dynamite at that. But, you know, we step out really big in our family. Now we need to step out like that in the world, and we're going to do that this year. That's what we're going to do, you know. And, and it comes from this idea of practicing love in a more full and complete way to really express the kindred spirit that love it gives us uh, it gives us and in my studying of Mary what I've had to do is take a look at that and apply these science of mind teachings and it's really interesting when we talk about our, our prayer technique and talk about the teaching symbol there's spirit there's soul and then there's the form down below and the soul is that plastic universe that's a, it's that unformed substance where everything comes from and comes through and if you think about Mary in some ways she represents that same thing you saw so what it takes into, to really manifest something in our lives is to really feel it. Not just to, to say it, but to feel it so that you know it. And Dr. Holmes and, and, and his brother Fenwick, they talk about that. They say that he knows best who seeing also feels. See, so once we see what our issues are, once we see what our problems are, and that's what I've been about doing with these records and looking back at time, to see what our problems are, then we're going to feel our way into a solution for these problems, you see. That's really the way it happens. And we're going to use our prayer technique to do it because if we're in prayer and we're taking this back to Mary for a minute, if we're in that Mary space, in that love space, we're in that soul space, we're in that, that heartfelt, that soft space where what Dr. Holmes calls the soul of the universe. And he says the soul of the universe is really the womb of nature. The womb, the holy womb of nature. So we're going to go into that womb and we're going to birth something really incredible over the next year, over 2016. All right? Now, sidebar. I told you I, I love this Mary thing, right? So I found this beautiful little form Mary, and I put it in my hand so you could see the reference point. I carry it with me in my pocket a lot of time to have that energy so that I can have that soul energy with me all the time. Now, in science of mind, we know that we can go directly to God. We don't need any emissaries to the divine, but sometimes it helps, you know? If you break your leg, it might be nice to have... <laughs> May I? <laughs> this, is my, this is Colleen's Mary right now. Right? But you see, it is. It's not, you know, do you not, do you have this at the wrong height for you? Well, it, it might be a little, oh, it, it might be a little lower. Yeah. It but I'm so glad to see you back and rocking in the, rocking in the band. She is totally demonstration. <gasps> Whoa. Save, absolutely. Yeah, pretty soon I'll be able to pick that up and play it. All I'm saying here is that 
Yes, we can go straight to the divine through our prayer, but sometimes it's nice to have a little help. That's why sometimes it's nice to sit with a practitioner or to have a prayer treat, have a prayer partner, and to work through uh, this soulful place, through this womb of creation so that you can get to the self-givingness, you see, where you can get to the place where action meets the need. And that's what we're talking about moving toward, where the action meets the need. See, with love, we begin with a dream. We begin with a dream, an idea. And then that idea comes with a design. That's when we go into prayer and meditation, into the gap space. We got the idea, we got the dream. Ooh, the design, I have a plan. Then we can step into action and build something anew. And that's the power of love. It starts with the power of love. It starts with understanding that we have something in us that's calling to us. In fact, in our spiritual practice this morning, we read something that said that, that uh, something like free will is an illusion. Free will is an illusion. Here's what they're talking about. We think we have free will, but there is something in us calling, tapping, urging us to move forward. And if we get quiet and listen to what that is, we have to respond to it. And we think it's free will, but it's already here, waiting for us to answer the call. We all have something that we're waiting to answer the call to. And if we go into the love space of our hearts and look for the need and then feel what we see, and then allow the dream to become an idea that gets designed, we will find a way to build it and create something anew in our lives. Action. Action meets need. And we need to be the ones in action. You know, it's interesting. Thinking about a river, you know, a river just flows in its banks. It does its own thing. And around, along the edge of the banks, some farmer plants some crops. And those crops are starving for water. And the river is right there. <laughs> What has to happen? He has to build a little channel and open up a gate so the water goes in. Once the water goes in, it's going to water those crops. But until somebody builds that gate, that river's just going about its business. Now, the universal energy is just going about its business. We have to build a gate and then open the gate so the universal channel of energy will flow into action for our lives. See, that's our challenge. How do we build that gate for ourselves? How do we open that gate and then allow the energy to step into action? It'll do the work if we begin the pre-work. If we begin the pre-work. Ernest and, him and uh, Fenwick again say, he who shares his love will find it grows by giving and thus expands itself. How about that? How about that? When you give your love, you get more love. When you give your love, you get more love. I'm a selfish kind of guy sometimes. I think that's a really good recipe. I think I'm going to give more love just so I can get some more love. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. That's a good kind of selfishness. I'm going to give more love on purpose so I can get some more love. Join me. It is easy. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I love this community. We are just having a good time. I'm not, you know, some Sunday I'm going to come in. I'm going to go, you guys do it. I'm going to sit right there. <laughs> just let it happen. Let it unfold. Let it unfold. See, what's, what's so wonderful about this whole journey of Mary for me is to find out that I have the same capacity for love. I have the same ability to know that I am blessed and to say that the word that is spoken is mine to do, to take the action, to build the gate, to go out there and make dreams come true. And I know that each and every one of us has that same ability within us. Each and every one of us. You see, we, we know how to see the good and then to feel good as a result of it. Because when that love is felt, when the love is really felt within us, we, we cannot help but do the good they were called to do. It's just the way it works as we listen. That's why we're spending so much time right now in meditation so that we can listen and then we'll know exactly what to do. We've got to get past the, the munchy mind, the monkey mind that's telling us what we should, could, would, da 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 the Uda family. It's we're in the quiet space. We fire the Uda family and we go dry, directly to the source, to the direct source of what are good. Emerson says, the whole human family, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that child bathed with an element of love or not? The whole human family is bathed with an element of love like a fine ether. It's all over us. It's all around us. It's, it's coming off of us. 
We can't help it. It actually takes more energy not to, right? You all heard this. It takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile, right? It takes more muscles to hate than it does to love. And the interesting thing about those that do hate, those that do that negative thing, they're so dedicated to it that they do it all the time. But those of us that love, we're part-timers. We love this, we'll level over here. But those that are really angry, they're angry all the time. So if you're really in love, be in love all the time. Get as love intense as those that are hate intense. And our power will overwhelm theirs. It's like light and dark. And when we put that love out in the, in the world, the darkness, the hate, the evil, it cannot, it, it cannot stand it. it. It can't exist against it. It goes away. It's really nothing but the absence of the love. So as we share more of it into the world, we will see less of the opposite in our world. See, this is the benefit of the merry love. We co-create a world that brings more peace, that allows more oneness into the universe, that allows things to be more fulfilled. Deeper than any words is within you a love that you will find through your own individual journey with your own Mary. It doesn't have to be my Mary or the Virgin Mary or the Blessed Mary. It can be your grandma, you know, whatever. Whatever gives you that <coughs> reminder, the beautiful gardenia that's blow growing in your front yard, whatever can give you that reminder to bring you that much closer to the divine, pay attention to it and listen to it and breathe it in and allow yourself to get journey with it, music, whatever, poetry, whatever. Just be one with it for a while until you fade away from all the definitions of who you think you are and you're just present with what you really are, which is love. Let me read from, the, from Fenwick and Ernest. It's a lovely book. Here is... Uh, the way it works, there's this guy that's traveling, he's called the fairer, and then uh, <laughs> there's the presence, it's the divine that he's that's talking, they're having a conversation with and a journey with, and then there's a scribe along the way kind of writing things down, he's kind of like the, the uh, narrator. But in this point, it's the presence talking, and the presence says, the deepest caves will yield their secrets to the soul who bears the torch of love, for love identifies it with the me, capital M-E. One thing alone can heal the wounds of sorrow to know the heart that beats through all creation, the love that sees all others in relation. Love's essence lies in its own givingness, and naught is whole without its blessedness. Naught is whole without this blessedness. The healing balm is love, and not the mind to soothe earth's heartaches. You hear that? The healing balm is love, not the mind, to soothe Irk's heartaches. For love alone can bind a fairer soul back to the source again. For love is union. And all the children who wander like the prodigal afar through love return to where the blessed are. Are you ready to make your return? For the love of Mary, come on, join me. Make the return. Make their return to where the blessed are. And so it is. So, now the affirmation. There it is. I know I say this every week, but it, they do. They make more sense after I get up here and talk, and I think, what am I going to say? And then it all comes out, and then it works in the end. Here we go. Let's do it together. And remember... Hashtag it. CSL see me with the hashtag. When you put your stuff on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, use that. It's like a file cabinet so we can find all the stuff that we hashtag over the time. Anytime you want an affirmation, you want a, an upbeat uh, uh, moment of inspiration, you can just go to your Facebook page and type in search hashtag CSL see me and boop, up pops all the stuff that we've posted. You see how wonderful that works? That's how the hashtag works. Here you go. Let's do it together. My dreams, designs, and ideas infused with Mary's love create wonders anew through me now. And so it is. Yes, indeed, my friends. All right. <sighs> this has been quite a week for our community. Quite a week. You know, many of you know Jeff Sendon, right? 
Okay, he lost his mom and his dad this week, made their transition. Then we have Carol and Eric. Love you guys. With Elizabeth. Kim Pagano. Yesterday, her mom passed. Didn't know, Monica. Dorothy had to put her dog down. It's been a week. Maria Teresa, right at Westlake, right? Yeah. So, um, in your own way, share that love. Share the love. Wrap them in, a, in your hearts. And know that that phrase that keeps coming to mind to me is, <laughs> our God is a God of the living, not of the dead. That life is. There is no, no end there is simply the transition. So recognizing the one life that is eternal and ongoing, that is God itself, ever creating, ever manifesting, ever begetting the only begotten, over and over and over again. In these times of loss, what we understand is that we have loved so deeply that our heart cracks at the idea of the change of the form of love. But love still remains. So we allow the form, the process, the presentation to change, but the emotion and the feeling stays the same. Deep, heartfelt, warming, comforting, joy-filled. <coughs> so I apply these truths to all those we're holding in our hearts right now. And on this day, where we have decided by some chance of marketing to focus on love, we allow that feeling to become the urgent response to anything that comes up in our lives today that looks like discomfort, dissatisfaction, disharmony, disillusionment. You put a DIS in front of it and we're going to put love on top of it and wipe it out. That is the power that we carry within us, the inner power, the inner strength that we have available each and every moment. So I call it forth in each and every one of you to, push, to put the kiss of the divine on every situation and condition that you know no longer needs to exist, be it sadness, disappointment, disharmony, loss of a job, looking for the right place to live. All of these things <laughs> respond to the caring kiss of love. So we give that kiss right now. And I'm so grateful for the power to know that this community exercises its power in prayer and brings that prayerful power into action in life. We create the gate, we open the gate, and we open the flood of spiritual truth into the lives of all those that we care about. I affirm that for each and every one of us right now as I release this prayer into a perfect law, declaring it so with me now by saying, and so it is. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Wow.